been working. It's been working. And at the end of the day, it's going to manifest who is y'all. After we, since I, because I mentioned this. Hey, hey, hey. Now you got to stop. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. And Numbers chapter 16, verse 4. And Matthew chapter 22 by verse. I'll say verse 1. We get praise, glory, and honor to the Most High, y'all. By the way, Yahoo, Shah, Hamashiach, our Master and King. Hello? Yo. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who no let will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, who the master shall consume with the ruach of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Hashatan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Numbers chapter 16 and verse 1. At the end of the day, anybody who perished, they're going to perish because they didn't receive a love for the truth. That's what it comes down to. Don't come down to much, nothing much, nothing, nothing much other than that. You know, the word is very, very simple. It can seem complex, but it's very, very simple. It's very, very simple. What makes it complex to people is the evil heart of unbelief that exists in man. That's what makes it complex. What makes it complex is because man want to do what he want to do. That's what makes it complex. 16 and 1. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathon, and Abiram, the sons of Elab, and On, the son of Pelab, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Yasharal, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered together against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are Kadesh. Every one of them and Yahuwah is among them. Wherefore then lift you up yourselves above the congregation of Yahuwah. Now these men are coming in with son and they envy him. Because they coming at this man saying he lift himself above the body of Yahuwah. They are already mad. This is also paralleling with the scribes and the Pharisees while they were mad at Mashiach. They felt like he was lifting himself over the body of Yahuwah. Not realizing it was his body to begin with. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spake unto Korah and all his company, saying, Even tomorrow, Yahuwah will show who are his. Hold on, you hear what he say? Hey, all right, Leah, Leah. Listen to what he say again. Even tomorrow, will Yahuwah will show who are his, and who is Kadesh, and will cause him to come near unto him, even him whom he have chosen. Will he cause to come near unto him? And this man has sat back and he done gave witness that Yah is going to show who are his, who set apart, and who he will call to come near to him. So that means this determining factor, it comes of Yahuwah, it don't come of man. Before we read Matthew 22, let's just look at Romans chapter 9 one more time. We're looking at this here because the mystery of iniquity and the mystery of Mashiach are dealing with a separation. That means it's the woman's seed and the servant seed. It's the wheat and the tares. The man is going to show who is his and who is set apart and who he's going to cause to come near unto him. No man on earth can make that determination. No man on earth can make that determination. No man got no kingdom to let nobody in. No man got no kingdom to put nobody out. I know I ain't got no, I can't keep nobody out of the kingdom. Now I'm going to tell you, people do things to stop people from getting in. But the things that they do to stop people from getting in is not giving them the word in Ruach and in truth. That's what they do to stop getting in. But the only reason why people stopping people from getting in, because just like the master said, they're not trying to get in themselves. So if you ain't trying to get in, you ain't going to make sure anybody else ain't getting in. If you're trying to get in, you're going to try to get other people in. That's the bottom line. But at the end of the day, the man just told you, y'all going to show who's or his and who he going to cause to draw near unto him. That means no man has anything to do with that. Romans 9, verse 14, 15. 
He said, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that will, nor of him that run, but of Elohim that show mercy. Get John chapter 1 about verse 14. So at the end of the day, it don't matter what anybody do. It don't matter how much you run. It don't matter what your will is. It's for the Yahoo show mercy. No man got nothing to do with that. Y'all save who he want to save. He heal who he want to heal. He damn who he want to damn. And who are you to speak against him? If you speak against him, you ought to go to hell. How you going to reply against Elohim? How is the clay going to tell the potter what you, why you doing what you doing? You know how proud you got to be to tell Elohim why you doing what you doing? You don't even sit back and look at that in itself. You ought to go to hell. When the book say pride is an abomination unto you, that's offensive to him. That's detestable. Actually, it's John 1 and 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become son, the sons of Elohim, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood. So you can't, if the flesh can't make you one, nor of will, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Elohim. Only Yah can do it. The will of man can't do it. The will of the flesh can't do it. Your bloodline can't do it. You being the seed of Yasharal, it can't do it. Yah got to do it. Yah got to place that in you. That's got to be in you from the foundation of the world. See, hold on. Go to Galatians chapter 4. Because Sunday came to my mind. And you know what I'm saying? And, and I know Pell know what I'm talking about. He can relate to it because it's because the, them thoughts been manifested unto him as well. You know what I'm saying? Like one of the most, and I done spoke to y'all about this here before. One of the most humbling things you can ever hear in your heart is when a word is being ministered to your heart and you're being referred to as a son. That's one of the most humblest things you could ever hear in your life. Because that's it, that means that's Elohim's way of letting you know I have accepted you. You know what I'm saying? Some people be like, oh, you telling yourself that. I never call my own self, son. I don't make no sense. I'm not from Harlem. I'm not from Brooklyn. So we don't talk like that. Why would I call myself that? Especially in a situation where it wouldn't dictate it. You know what I'm saying? I know Pell can talk to y'all about it in person. If he desired to do it, he posted about it. I know when he heard that, it's probably one of the most humblest things you ever hear in your life. Especially the scenario of what he heard. Something like that gives you the strength to keep going. That means this man letting you know, I heard you, and I see your affliction, and I'm with you. Man, I'm going to tell y'all something, man. I done been low. I ain't even talking about recently. I done been down, out, all type of stuff, man. And to sit back and be praying or be walking to hear, I'm with you. I'm with you. That's the most humblest thing you could ever hear, because that's going to give you the strength to keep going, because your Allah ain't letting you know I've not forsaken you, because sometimes we could be just like David. In my haste, I say I've been cut off from Allah and he ain't heard my cries. See, when I was depressed, that's how I was feeling. Not that I lost faith in Allah, but that it sat back, you sitting back, look, at, I've been cut off before his eyesight. I spoke too fast. This man don't hear me nor see me. Therefore, what desire do I have to live if I have not my Allah? I have no desire to continue. See, some of y'all don't want to continue if you lose a person. I don't care about losing no person because I didn't know you before I met you. So that means I was, I was able to live before I knew you. That means if you leave, I can keep on living because I, it was a time period where I didn't know you. But I can't live without y'all though. I can't lose him. I can lose everybody I know in life. I can't lose him. I can't lose him. You know what I'm saying? That's real talk. I can't lose him. I don't care about, you can sit back and look at, man, it's a hurtful thing, man. Somebody you love passed, or somebody you love, they ain't around you no more. You know what I'm talking about? Whatever the case may be, that's a hurtful thing. But over the process of time, it's going to hurt, but it ain't going to hurt as bad. Ain't going to be nothing worse than the feeling to hear, depart from me, you work of iniquity, I never knew you. To lose your Elohim, that's devastating. There's a feeling of despair that can't even be explained. That the thought that you think he gone. You know what I'm saying? Even when, even when the man was trying to comfort my soul, my soul refused. Come. It's crazy because I know people know 
Y'all don't know because you ain't been through them sorrow to be saying things in your heart that's in the book and he don't even allow you to register in your mind you saying what the book say while you're going through it. The only way that's going to happen because the word is in you. Before I read this, where I'm at right here, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1, or probably about verse 3 or 4, actually, about 4 and 4. You know, uh, I say, man, little Stanley asks me all the time, and I don't be mad at him for asking. He say, man, how does that stuff come to your head like that? And I told y'all this stuff before, man. When I first started preaching in the street, like really preaching all the time, in 2010 in the street, I used to have that big old family Bible, and I used to pull that, and I would go in that backpack and pull that big old book out, and one day the thought came to my head, this thing got to be in your heart, man. It's got to be in your heart. I will put in your mouth what to say. You don't have time to go in this bag and pull this book out all the time. This thing's supposed to be inside of you. You're supposed to take these written words that are on these pages or written on tables of stone, and they're supposed to be written on fleshly tables of the heart or on your mind. That's what he said, the new covenant is. I will write my Torah, my instructions, my word, my mind, my thoughts, and put it in your mind and in your heart. But it can't get in your mind and heart if you don't believe it. That's the essence. That's the key. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. And no man can give you that mind, as we've already read. Only y'all can give you that mind. I can't make nobody believe. I can't make nobody unbelieve. That's the whole key thing that we be missing. You can't make somebody believe the word. Only y'all can get in that mind. Only he can do it. And if he don't give it to us, we won't believe it. So you got to pray that he keep your mind in the word. That ought to be your prayer every single day, every single minute. Give me a mind to love you, honor you, serve you, trust you, believe you, hope in you. Everything that is you, keep it in my mind. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. He said, but when the fullness of time was come, Elohim sent forth his son made of a woman made under the Torah to redeem them that were under the Torah, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, Elohim have sent forth the Ruach of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son, if a son, then an heir of Elohim through Mashiach. So this man said, I can let you know that if you've been adopted into the family through faith, the righteous obedience of faith, you're a son. He's going to put into your mind the mind of Mashiach where you don't just be like Yahuwah. You're going to call him Abba. You're going to call him, this is my father because this is whom I serve. Get Malachi 1 and 6 before I come back to Romans chapter 8. We're going to get Matthew 22. Don't worry about the mystery of Nick. We're going to get with that with them. But before we get there, we got to sit back and do just like we did when because this is the direction he's taking us. Just sit back and look at it. You got to get your mind and heart girded up. You got to get it girded up. Because he say, he say once you've been adopted, he's going to put in to send forth the Ruach of his son. You're going to cry out, Abba, Father, this is my father. Malachi 1 and 6. Do, 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 do. A son honor his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where's my honor? If this man your father, where's respect at? Why you got a blunt in your mouth? Your penis in your hand. Cuss words in your mouth. Hate in your heart. Adultery on your brain, stealing, breaking in Shabbat, disobedient and unbelieving, malicious and spiteful, all manner of uncleanliness. How you, how he, if he your father, where's respect at? You nigga got more respect for your flesh and blood, daddy, than your father in Shamahim. What type of sense that make? Some of you don't respect your parents, though. You'll try them anyway. So I know you can't respect y'all if you don't respect your earthly parents. No, you're going. Why do you think he gave you the commandment, honor your father and mother? If you can't even honor your father and mother whom you see, you definitely not going to honor your father whom you don't see. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Let's just look at the reality of it. Sit back and look at it. Because to love somebody according to the word is to honor them and respect it. So if you love Allah, where's respect at? 
Don't you realize every time you sin, you disrespect this man to his face? That's like walking up to your flesh and blood daddy and saying, F you, nigga. Spitting it in the face. Man, my daddy ain't raised me, man. I'm 35 years old. My daddy ain't teach me nothing. He ain't do nothing. You know what I'm talking about? And when I seen this man, I ain't, I ain't never disrespected my daddy. And some people be like, if you did, I could understand. I ain't never disrespected my daddy, man. I'm talking about even when he wasn't right, I ain't never disrespected my daddy. And the man was in bad shape when I seen it, and I went to go take care of that. Still, my daddy don't make no difference. And I would have did that without the word. Because it don't make, make no difference. That's still my daddy. Regardless of what he did or didn't do, that don't give me no room to disrespect him. That's immaturity. You don't say after a while, you got to get over that stuff, man. That's over with, nigga. You grown. Nigga, I can see you. See, man, I'm at my daddy house. Man, my Uncle Wilford still hot by his daddy not being around. Uncle Wilford about 60 years old. He's still bitter about it. He's still bitter about it. I got over it young. I sat back and looked at it. That's his loss. If a nigga don't want to fool with me, I look at it here. That's your loss. I ain't losing nothing. That's how you supposed to look at it. That's your loss. Ain't my loss. I'm your flesh and blood. You know what I'm saying? Your essence, everything, that's you. So if you turn around and not to be there, that's your loss. It ain't mine. I ain't never walk around sad like, oh, man, my daddy ain't around. Mama, why daddy don't love me? I ain't never do that. To be honest, I ain't never really give it much thought. You know what I'm saying? When you sitting back looking at where you're going to sleep at and you hungry, you ain't thinking about why that nigga ain't around. You ain't thinking about that. At least I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't thinking about it. Then when my sister was born, I really ain't thinking about it. I'm thinking about her. I can't be worried about him. Got to worry about her. I'm the one got to take care of her after school. I'm the one got to do this and do that and do this because mama at work. Can't be sitting around here. Fit. Oh, man, my dad ain't around. Oh, well. I'm telling him, dead real, man, my dad ain't teach me nothing. Absolutely nothing. My mama taught me the best she could. She ain't know much. That's why our people be so behind, because our people can't, you can't teach, the, they can't teach the kid nothing. They don't know nothing. They so busy trying to survive, they don't know nothing. Thank y'all he gave me a mind to learn on my own, and that my auntie and my mama taught me that to learn on your own. Don't wait for nobody to give you no information. Malachi 1 and 6. A son honor his father and a servant his master. If I then be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear, saith you who of hosts? Unto you, O priest, that despise my name. And ye said, wherein have we despised thy name? Don't you realize you hate this man's name every time you sin? And you're going to turn around and say, ha, I hate you. I don't hate you. What about this, this, and this you just did, nigga? Talking about you don't hate me. Why you call me master, master, don't do the things that I say? What did he do that at? Matthew chapter 22. This going to be real with it, man. You can't be sitting around playing. I'm going to tell you something, man. I'll keep it hot with you. Because when you go to stand before this man in judgment, man, that man ain't trying to hear none of them cocky, maimy excuses you trying to bring. None of that lame stuff you trying to sell. The man ain't buying it. He don't went postal. Mail it to the next man. He don't want it. He don't want it. Your deposit has been rejected. If you making excuses for evil behavior now, you know you're going to try to slide this man at that on his throne, but you're going to be so fearful and scared, you ain't going to open your mouth. You ain't going to open your mouth. That man said, you're going to tremble. Everybody got to stand in front of this man's judgment seat. Everybody got to stand in front of it. Everybody got to stand in front of it, man. 22 and 1. And Yahoo shall answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of Shamahim is like unto a certain king who made a marriage for his son. And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. You see that there? He said, I called for these niggas, but they wouldn't come. You know what he said in Isaiah 65? He said, I spake, and they did not hear. And when I called, they did not answer. Now you sit back and think about that. Not just with his word. This man could be ministering thoughts to your heart, and you don't hear, and you don't answer. Boy, I can tell you when I first started this, man, I can hear my name called, and I'll be like, Master, I'm here. Like, straight up, just instinct. Ain't even thinking about it. But I can remember being a little child hearing my name called. This man say he called his sheep by name. I go run to my mama, you just called me? No, what? Go right back in the room, hear my name called again. Go right back in there, you just called me? And you know what niggas like to tell you? That's the devil calling you. And it's the most high calling us the whole time. And they done trained us to sit back and think to not listen to hear the man call. I know 
some of y'all didn't experience that. You just sat back, been in the room, heard your name called. You wanted like this here, running in there, who just called me? Ain't nobody called you. Sometimes you niggas got called and didn't even get up. And I ain't trying to see what they want them doing, son. That man said he called a sheep by name. We know that. We done looked at that before because it said Adam named every beast of the field. He gave it a name. That's going back to Mashiach. I got called my sheep by name. I know them and they follow me. Oh, well, I say, I'm going to show who's Yahuwah's and who's set apart and who he going to call to come near to him. And he sent forth servants, other servants telling them which are bidden. Behold, I prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed. All things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Listen what he said. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his service and treated them spitefully and slew them. They sit back and look at it. Man, that nigga crazy. Troy say he had a dude in the car when he was driving on Uber the other day. Say dude heard the word, heard me while I was preaching. And he said, yeah, boy, that man telling the truth. I ain't finna do it, though. You know what's bad with some of y'all? Y'all sit there and hear it and don't do it. Just like he said in Ezekiel. You say, come, let us hear the word of Yahuwah. And he's saying, you sit before me, last my people. He's saying you hear his words and you say it sound like somebody who play an instrument or sing a lovely song. He say, but you hear my words, but you won't do them because your heart go after your covetousness or your desires or your lust or your belly or your idolatry straight to hell. Like that's scary, man, that you'll sit back and be like, boy, I love to hear the word. Boy, that boy brought one, boy. Boy, he broke them precepts down, but your mind go right after what you lusting after. That's why he said they went into their business. They made light of it. Man, we got stuff to go do, man. Stunting this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Stunting what he talking about. Say these people heard the same word, heard the same call. That's Ezekiel 33 I'm referencing about verse 29 if you want to go read it for yourself. One time he sat back and said, yeah, heart, go after they covered it. They hear your word, they not going to do them. He said, this people heart, they say they draw nigh to me with their mouth. And with, they, and with they mouth, they show much love, but their heart is far from me. Your mind is far from the man. You show a lot of love. Boy, I love, praise Yahuwah. I love Yahuwah. Hallelujah for Yahusha. Boy, praise Yahusha. Thank Allahim. Boy, praise Allahim. But your mind ain't nowhere near the man. Nowhere near the man. Because you don't care nothing about that stuff you saying out your mouth if your heart ain't right. At the end of the day, it's about your heart. It's about your mind. Where is your mind at? That's what's going to show who set apart, who's your who's, and who he going to call to come near to him, which is not going to allow you to end up being damned because you had a pleasure in unrighteousness. We're trying to warn you before this stuff come. Because when we start getting off more and more into this, and we have about 22 minutes, so I got plenty of time before we ease our way into talking about what we're looking at with the mystery of iniquity. You sit back and you look at that man. Your mind and heart ain't right, boy. You going down. You going down. Like down, down, and it's gonna be your fault. Like it don't make sense. And when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then he said to his servants, "The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage." So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how come thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Many are called, few are chosen. So let's sit back and look at something in Revelation 16 and 15 because the man ain't had no garment on. This man said, Many are called, few are chosen. Get Isaiah 65, not Isaiah 65, but Psalm 65. Info. This man said, Many are called, few are chosen. He said this man had on the wrong wedding garment. I mean, he had on the wrong clothes. He had on the wrong clothes. Now, what could this be telling us by having on the wrong clothes?
Revelation 16 and 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Baruch is he that watch and keep his garments, lest he walk naked and see his shame. See, when you got on the wrong garment, he said, if you walk naked, we're going to see your shame. See, all you got to do, we didn't talk about this before, all you got to do is go back and look at the law. When they ate that, when they ate the fruit, uh, uh, ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they seen that they were naked and they went to get something to cover their shame. Because when you commit sin, your shame is seen. That's your nakedness. You exposed. That means you're exposed to the adversary. You're exposed to destruction. See, look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Then get you Jude chapter 1. Ain't but one chapter in Jude anyway. See, when he talking about you got on the wrong garment, you can't come to this man in no garment of flesh. He say that which is flesh is flesh and that which is ruach is ruach. You got to be born again. You're going to have to be converted. You're going to have to be changed. you got to put them filthy garments off. Y'all know what it says in Zechariah, the third chapter, with Yahushua, the high priest, son of Jehoshadak. He had on filthy garments. He said, take that stuff off of him and give him clean ones. So put that filthy garment off. But no, nah, nigga don't want to put it off. I want to, I want to, I want to stay. I want to, I want to, I want my, I want mine a little dingy. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 8. That's all we want. He said, let thy garments always be white and let thy head lack no ointment. You need to make sure your clothes is clean. Why do we say that? Let's look in Jude. Let's look in Jude. Pistol of Jude, 20th verse, make it 18. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their ungodly lust. So in this last time, you got people who are going to walk after their ungodly desires. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, not having the Ruach. Hold this, because I got to do it. Go to Bereshit chapter 3 of Genesis 3 and by verse 1. Hold you. He say, these that go after the ungodly lust, they separate themselves. They're sensual. They're carnal. They don't have the Ruach. They got the wrong garments on. We got two words here that we're going to look at. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahuwah Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have Elohim said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. So the first word that we're going to look at here, brothers and sisters, is serpent. The word is nakash. It is spelled N-A-C-H-A-S-H. -H. Nakash. N-A-C-H-A-S-H. -H. It simply means serpent or snake. But we know that's a little simplistic. That don't really tell us nothing, now does it? But when we look and we spell it out, we see we have the noon, we have the cot, and we have the shan. We have the noon, we have the cot, and we have the shine. And what do we get? We get a seed that separates to destroy. That's what we get. A seed that separates to destroy. So when we look at the serpent, he did exactly that. He was a seed that was separated to destroy. This is why Jews say that they are sensual, not having the Ruach, because they are Satan's children. Their ob objective is to separate and to destroy the children of Elohim. This is what they are made for. The sons of Belial, worthless. And I'm going to show you this in this book, that the sons of Belial or the sons of the serpent, sole purpose are to separate. Why do you think the master say that, that this man came to steal, kill, and destroy? You thought he was lying? That's what the serpent does. It's in his, that's in his nature. The second word we're going to look at is beast. It is uh, C-H-A-Y. I know I'm going to mispronounce it. That's why I didn't even try to say it. The word beast is, is spelled C-H-A-Y. 
the characters that we have for this are the cot and the yard. And what do we get from that? A separated closed work. A separated closed work. So if this subtle beast has a separated closed work and he's the seed to separate and destroy, we see that his work, that th th this beast whole objective is to cause a work to get you separated from Allahim. This is why we, we talked about this the other day, right? Last week, matter of fact. Let me pull the word out. When we look at one sinner destroy much good in Ecclesiastes 9 and 15, because one sinner will destroy much good. The book tell it. That's what y'all said. And we look at sinner and his kata to miss, to miss the, the, the goal, a path, to miss the mark, a wanderer from the way. And it literally means to separate the snake who brings death. Now you sit back and look at all these three things tying in with the mystery of iniquity. A seed that separates to destroy, a separate closed work, and the benefit of it is a separate snake who is dead or brings forth dead works. And you wonder why the man told you not to fool with the sinners of the land. You wonder why he tell you evil communications corrupt good manner. And niggas really think that that's not going to happen to it when the word bear witness this is what's going to happen to you. Where is the wisdom? Where is the discernment at? Come on back to Jude because Jude already told you. Those who follow after their ungodly lust, they sensual. They don't have a ruach. So what are they going to come to do? To steal, to kill, and destroy. They're going to steal your salvation. They're going to kill your ruach. They're going to destroy your body and soul in hell. In Gidon, where the fire, where they say, where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. And what you think the man of sin come to do? That's why he said, don't think that I came to bring shalom. I came to bring a sword. I came to bring a separation. This man came to separate the Kadeshim from the ungodly. That's why you sit back and see Kohath. They were envy. They were sinners. They didn't get in the land. They got swallowed up by the earth. That's why y'all put in Moses' mouth. Man, y'all going to show you who are his and who is Kadesh. And whom he calls to draw near unto him. He going to show you. It's going to be manifest. That's why he say he that commits sin is of the devil. He that's born of Elohim sin not. And this the children of Elohim are manifest. And the children of the devil. Just like what the law said. But we think it's a game. Your work show who your daddy is. If you cleave to it. That means he your daddy too. Because the law say that a sinner and a Kadeshim will always have hatred between one another. They'll never meet in agreement. So if we meet in agreement with a sinner, then we a sinner. Bottom line. If we meet in agreement with a Kadeshim, that means we a Kadeshim. That's why he say don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Light has no agreement with darkness. Mashiach has no agreement with Belial. The anointed one has no agreement with something that is worthless. What communion does Mashiach have with the devil? What agreement do they have? How are they going to sit back and be like, I know you wicked, ain't no truth in you, but you my nigga. I'm going to ride with you. We won. What? How that's going to happen? Why you think it's going to be conflict with the man of sin and the children of Elohim in the last days? We don't meet an agreement. I hate you and you hate me. You a sinner? I'm a saint. I hate you. I hate you. I'm going to kill you. That's what the sinner going to say to the Kadeshim. I'm going to kill you. I hate you, nigga. I put a curse on you, nigga. I'm coming for you. I was talking to little Stanley about this earlier. What you niggas going to do when they come to lock us up? And we going to go in the book about this tonight. What you going to do when they come to fan some of you niggas going to fold? When the people going to talk about locking you up, you be like, boy, I know about 40, 50 niggas around the corner. They all serve it because you niggas can't do 20 minutes in the jailhouse. Like straight up. What you gonna do when they come to lock you up? What you gonna do when they come and say if you don't deny this man, you're gonna die? What you gonna do? Because you niggas scared to die right now. You scared to die to sin in the world. So I know you scared to literally die. You won't die right now. So when they come for your life, you gonna fear it, you gonna deny him. You gonna turn on those who you say were your ox and the coops, you gonna turn on them. Because you don't want to die. If 
if a nigga done been to jail, he don't see jail. It's nothing. I sit in this cell all day long, man. It's nothing, nigga. Room service, nigga. You can bring my food right to my door, nigga. On see jail. Joseph ain't see it. Jeremiah ain't see it. Paul ain't see it. Peter ain't see it. You think you better than them? Why they wasn't scared? Why you scared? Zechariah wasn't scared to die. John the Baptist wasn't scared to die. The master wasn't scared to die. Paul wasn't scared to die. Paul got stoned and got up and went to preaching the next day. Now I'm going to take two, three weeks off. How many of y'all take rocks upside your head for preaching the word and get up and do it the next day? Like it's whatever, I'm out here. I don't see that. Don't put no fear in my heart. Ain't no Kool-Aid in me. But you niggas scared of your, of, your of your bosses, of your employers. Nigga, you niggas scared of the police. You scared of somebody, your family members, what they going to think and what they going to say. So I know you're going to fear these people when they come to kill you. Because you scared of man right now. That's the difference. That's how y'all going to show who is his and who not. We overlook stuff like that. I don't overlook none of it. You know what I'm saying? Because I know what the book say, man. You, but when you, when, the, when you know what the words say and you believe it and you trust it, it brings all comfort in all situations. Even when you down, it's a part of your ruach being comforted. Hello? Yo, what's going on with you, brother? Shalom. Shalom. You know what I'm saying? It's going to comfort you, man. But let me continue. Jude, Epistle of Jude, verse 19. These be they who separate themselves sensual, not having the Ruach. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most Kadesh faith, praying in the Ruach HaKadesh, keep yourselves in the love of Elohim, looking for the mercy of our master, Yahushua HaMashiach, unto eternal life. And some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. I got to keep my garments. Why? I don't want none of that flesh staining my garments. I don't want that on me, man. I don't want that on me, man. Psalm 65 and 4. Oh, excuse me. Sixty-five and four, man. He said, Baruch is the man whom thou choose and cause to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts and shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy Kadesh temple. The reason why we came there, can we look at, in Hebrew, the word there is Bahar. It's spelled B-A-C-H-A-R. It literally means to choose, elect, decide, for to decide for when we look at the characters which i ain't got this written down but i'm finna just go ahead and do it right this here right obviously the first character we're gonna get is the bot which literally means household family or the into the household family then i sit back and say the cot and the uh and the raj all day long so when we look at this word bahar in Hebrew, we get into the household or family a chamber that separates to the head person or the highest. So when the Most High chooses you, he has literally brought you into his family. So he's poured his Ruach into your heart that you might call him Abba and made you his son to separate you to the highest. That's what it means to be chosen. And he decided that for you. How do we know that? Ephesians chapter 1. Because the man said, I'm going to let it be known who are yours, who set apart, and who he calls to draw near unto them. Those who he called to draw near unto them are those whom he have chosen, those whom he have selected, those whom he have separated unto himself. Not by the will of the flesh, not by the will of man, but by the will of Elohim. Mm -mm. So when we turn around and we go back to look at that woman seed and that serpent seed, you know we're going to have to sit back and, and, and ascertain the word woman in Genesis chapter 3 as well because we got serpent. So we sit back and look at the noon or the serpent 
or the seed, the serpent seed. We look at the serpent seed. My apologies, I ain't got my word in front of me. It's literally a seed that separates to destroy. That's ugly. That's ugly. And you got to sit back and look at it. We're going to go back and look at Revelation, I mean, Matthew 13. Somebody on this planet has to fit in that, in that framework. Y'all forbid it's any one of y'all. And that's real, man. Y'all forbid. Ephesians 1 and about verse uh, 4. Make it three. Ephesians 1 and 3. Ephesians 1 and 3. Baruch be the Elohim and Abba of our master, Yahushua HaMashiach, who have baruched us with spiritual blessings and Shamahim and places in Mashiach, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So that means he decided to choose you. He decided this for you before the foundation of the world. This has already been decided. You have already been brought into the family that separates to the highest. That's why he say many are called, few are chosen. Many hear the word, only few have been separated into the household. Only a few have been brought into the household, separated to the highest. A few have been brought into the family, separated to the highest. Only a few. Only a few. Many hear the call, only few are literally the sons of Elohim, are literally a part of his family. Get 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 behind this when I finish this here. Because I just want the women to know that they are not exempt. He says, uh, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be Kadesh and without blame before him in love. Just like what the law said. Those who are Yahuwahs, they're going to be Kadesh. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahushua HaMashiach to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Just like what the word chosen means. Just like what we read in John chapter 1. Just like what we read in, in Galatians chapter 4. Before we read 2 Corinthians 6 and 17, get Romans 8 and 14. This sitting back showing you that this man word, if you separate, if you are the woman seed, you're going to be brought into the family. I'm looking at the word for woman in Hebrew right now. Just give me a moment. Hopefully I don't make no mistake when I go through these characters. Hopefully I get them right the first time. Some of them I can do better than others. And then other ones I got to lean on my brethren for that one now. That are a little bit more skilled in that than I am. But the word in Hebrew for woman is isha. That's why you hear ish, that means why. You know what I mean? You got three characters. I think I can handle that. At least I hope so. Romans 8 and 14. And for as many as are led by the Ruach of Elohim, they are the sons of Elohim. If you led by the faith of Mashiach, you a son of Elohim. If you ain't led by that, you ain't no son. Always remember when we see Ruach that the, one of the things, of course, we know it means breath. And we know that that's the Rosh and the U. And uh, I want to say the Aleph as well. You know what I'm saying? But you sit back and give us... Uh, The highest, the secured hook or nail to the first leader. So to get to that, to be to that, you got to believe on him as the scripture have said. When you see Ruach, you need to think about faith, trust, and hope in Yahuwah by way of Yahusha. That's the key thing, man. And you know, regardless if y'all, some of y'all who've been around longer realize it or not, I've been always talking about faith since the day that you know me. It didn't register with some of y'all. Some of y'all it may have had. But that is the most important thing that you will ever possess. To get the gift of faith is the most precious gift I ever received in my entire life. Ain't nothing like the Most High giving you a gift to trust, believe, and hope in him. Because everybody don't get that. And if he give you that, that's an inkling of showing that you belong to him because that will, will cause you to draw near unto him. And that is what will separate you from everyone else which will bring you into his household, into his family. If you don't have no faith, you have nothing. And faith come by hearing, and hearing come by the word of Elohim. It don't take 10 years to get no faith. It don't take 10 months to get no faith. Truth be told, it don't even take 10 minutes. It don't even take 10 minutes. Because most of the brothers that I know, who got an unwavering faith, they believe instantly. 
instantly. Instantly. It wasn't nothing even to think about. They believed instantly. I know speaking for myself, I believed instantly. It wasn't no doubt. I ain't doubted that this word was true not a minute since I've been doing this. Not one time. Anytime brothers done brought to me something where they was wondering like, yeah, man, this brother brought this here, he brought this here. I went to go find information to destroy what the individual was talking about trying to discredit the book. Because there's nothing that any man on this earth can tell me that Yahuwah is not real. Nobody can't tell me that. Nobody can't convince me of that. I will not believe it. I know this man is real. I know it through the word and I know it through manifestation in the physical realm. I know he real. I know he real. And I ain't budging off that. Ain't nothing could make me budge off that. Nothing. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. I can't lose my faith because I got it. If I was to lose it, that means I never had it. Ain't no losing, no, ain't no doubting. I done went too far and seen too much to doubt this man. Straight up and down. Verse 15. For you have not received the Ruach of bondage again to fear, but you have received the Ruach of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Ruach itself bear witness with all Ruach that we are the children of Elohim. That's where that come in at when it sit back and you hear son manifested unto you. Because he say the Ruach itself bear witness with ours, you are a son of Elohim. Only reason that's going to happen, you got to believe. And if the ch if children, then heirs, heirs of Elohim, joint heirs with Mashiach, if so be that we suffer with him, that we also may be esteemed together. That's what don't nobody want to do. Don't nobody want to suffer no affliction by denying themselves the things of the flesh. And don't nobody want to suffer whether it's sorrow, whether it's persecution, whether it's tribulation. Don't nobody want to suffer that. Don't nobody want to suffer that? Who want to suffer that? Nobody. I want it easy and smooth. You's a bastard. He said, Baruch to those whom he chastened out his Torah. So if you take on the sorrows, the chastisement, the tribulations, the persecutions that Yahuwah took on, which were written before he was manifested in the flesh, that shows forth how you become a son. You don't want to take him. You's a bastard. A dirty dog, bald head, rotten mouth bastard. And you can go read Deuteronomy 23 and 2 for yourself. Ain't no bastard entered into the congregation of Elohim. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. I said it. I don't care who don't like it. 6 and 16. It is what it is. All oh, bastard means you illegitimate. You illegitimate. What agreement have the temple of Elohim with idols? For you are the temple of the living Elohim. As Elohim have said, I will dwell in them, and I will walk in them, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith Yahuwah, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a Abba unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, say Yahuwah Almighty. He said, for that to happen, you got to separate. His chosen are going to separate. His chosen will separate from all sinners, all worldly ways, all things of transgression. His people are going to separate. Not intermingle, not compromise, separate. Kadesh literally means to separate. Consecrate means to separate. Sanctify means to separate. You know what I'm saying? I can sit back and I can kick it with anybody, but I can't sit and chill with sinners too long. We ain't got nothing in agreement. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got nothing in agreement. Nigga, I don't want to hang with you, nigga. It's going to be awkward. Most people who transgress and they know what I'm about, they don't like me and they don't want to be around me. And why would I have a fake force interaction with somebody I know don't want to be around me? I ain't finna do that. I ain't with that phony and fake stuff. You don't like me. I know you don't like me, but I'm going to hang out with you and we're going to pretend like it's all love and it's all cool. For what? If I don't like a nigga, I don't even be bothered. And if I know you don't like me, I'm not even going to be bothered. For what? I don't understand why nigga do that. Be on that phone. You know you don't like this person. Let, let's go hang out. And I know I don't like you. 
Oh, I know you don't like me. That's phony. That's fake. I'm not finna do that. You know what I'm saying? I could get, I could, I could be married to somebody I know. Their mama and daddy, their family hate me. I ain't hanging with none of them. For what? I ain't coming around. I ain't doing none of that. Which, and I know you don't like me because the whole thing gonna be fake. I don't want nobody coming with no fakes, hugs, and kisses. That's how niggas get killed. I'm not finna do that. Hang around. What's up, boy? I even be see that in the street. Boy, I see you shining, boy. Yeah, I see you doing your thing. I see you, my nigga. I know you don't like me. I know first chance you'll get, you'll rob me and put a bullet in the back of my head. I'm finna go to the club with you. I'm finna hang out with you. I'm finna sit in the trap with you. I know you don't like me. I'm not finna do that. That's crazy. But some of y'all like to be phony and fake. I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna hang out with people I don't like or don't like me. And it's not many people that I don't like. It's, very few. it's not like, like I don't like this person. I mean, I care to be around you. I'm going to put it to you this way. This is how I was raised. This is how I was taught. It's not that we don't like a person. We don't like your ways. You know what I'm talking about? You got some foul way. I don't have a problem with you. I got a problem with your ways. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a problem with you. Some people, I don't think y'all can make the, de the delineation between the two. Just because you got a problem with somebody's ways don't mean you got a problem with them. I can dislike your ways and like you. Just don't like the stuff you do. But if I know a nigga don't like me, I'm not hanging with that nigga. I'm not coming around him. I ain't doing nothing with him, and I know you don't like me. Why would I do that? I don't know why people do that. Why do people do that? Do you know why people do that? I'm being dead on it. I'm being serious. Like, I don't know why people do that. I said, I'm not doing it. You know what I'm saying? For who? I ain't keeping no peace. Because you don't like me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't see myself hanging with somebody I know hate me. Because how am I supposed to have an interaction with a nigga I know don't like me? That means I got to be phony and fake. You know what I'm saying? And I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. I ain't gonna do that. Come on around here to G Genesis 39 and 20. Matter of fact, Revelation 2 and 9. We still gonna intersperse in, son. We still gonna intersperse that knowing who y'all's and who's not y'all's. But now let's get to some, let's get to some uh let's get to some uh mystery of iniquity. You know what I'm saying? You have to sit back and look at it. The master was walking around. He knew all them people hated him. Oh, my bad. Let me read this, uh, break this word down. This ish up. Let me do this real fast. We got three characters here. We got this ish. Let's see which one we're going to have here first. Uh, hold on one second, y'all. Ooh, that hurt. So we got Isha. Isha. Which one would we have for that? My word. We're going to have to come back on that one. Because I don't know what I start that off with. Come on, Revelation 2 and 9. Most high willing. It'll drop it in my brain how to go ahead and do that, though. Revelation 2 and 9. Always remember that, man. Yahuwah is an Elohim that is Kadesh. That means he's an Elohim of separation. Don't let nobody tell you different. Don't deceive yourself into believing different. The man is all about separation. He is all about separation. All about separation. 2 and 10, my apologies, is not 2 and 9. For none of these things, hold on, make it, yeah, two and eight. It's cool, two and eight. Matter of fact, two and seven, because he's taking off talking. When we come back after we get finished with the mystery of iniquity, Yahuwah willing, we'll be dealing with the seven synagogues of Asia. Yeah, we're going to deal with that. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Ruach saith unto the synagogues. To him that overcome will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Elohim, and unto the Malachim of the synagogue in Smyrna, right, these things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. 
I know thou works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Yahudim and are not, but are the synagogue of Hashatan. Now hold it, my selector. He said he knows the blasphemy of them who say that they are Yahudim, or those that are circumcised in the heart, or the praise of Yahuwah, but really they are of the house of Hashatan. The house of the seed that separates to destroy. You understand what I'm telling you? Hashatan is a sinner. Oh, man. Golly, that's going to really hurt. Hashatan is a separated snake which brings forth death. So that's what a sinner is. Anyone who's of his household is a sinner. He that commits sin is of the devil. That's what you are. You bring forth death and you bring forth destruction. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. I'm going to show y'all son. Go to Hebrew chapter 12. I'm going to work this a couple different ways. Sit back and show you who's yours and who's not and who he calls to approach unto him. I was talking to little Stanley about this here too while we were riding. Ain't, and I said this to y'all Wednesday. Ain't never one of us shed no blood not to sin. If you can't, if you can't resist sin right now and you ain't shed no blood, I know you're not gonna resist sin and you're gonna have to shed some blood. You're not gonna do it. Because you ain't doing it now. That's what you're not understanding. If you don't have the mind to do it now, you're not gonna do it later. It's just not magically going to pop in your head that you're going to do this. This ain't a fairy tale. This ain't that crap they put in them Christian movies. That stuff got to already be in your heart before you in that situation. Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking unto Yahusha, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the stake, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of Elohim. It said, this man, for the joy, he found it joyous to suffer for you. To suffer for us. To suffer for the world. And we don't find it joy. That's why he say the word of Elohim is a reproach unto them. They don't have no delight in it. You don't delight in the word. It's an offense to you. You know how we know it's an offense? Because when you see something in there that, that, it, that's, that shows that you're contrary to the word and you get mad when you see it and remain contrary. Or when the word convicts you. Or when the word show forth the manifestations of the intents and the thoughts of your heart. Or when the word show forth what your behavior actually magnifies and actually exemplifies. It shows you don't have a delight in it. It's a reproach to you. Those who delight in the word rejoice in the word. You can sit back and look at it. I'll give you an example of something real. We ain't going to go read it. You can read it for yourself. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 2. Might be actually it's 1 Samuel chapter 3. My apologies. It's the story with Samuel and Eli. I say, y'all on your own time, man. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you know, write it down. Go read it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You can see it for yourself. Samuel hears y'all call him, right? You know what I'm saying? And then y'all tell Samuel about what he was going to do to Eli's household and his sons, right? Because of the wickedness that Eli's sons was doing. And Eli didn't stop his sons, right? And then when Eli came to him and he said, tell me everything y'all said, don't hold nothing back. And he told him, and he said, you who is righteous, let his word be completed. How many of y'all, if somebody came to pronounce that y'all had pronounced evil upon you, would have a mind to open your mouth and say that? You know what most of you going to do? You going to get mad. Man, y'all ain't told you nothing like that. He ain't said nothing like that. You just don't know, nigga. You hate y'all, nigga. That's how you know you're wrong, nigga. Because you trusted y'all. You know what you've been doing. You know what you've been doing. You know what I'm saying? Eli knew what his sons had been doing. It wasn't like it was a news flash, like it was breaking news he didn't know. He knew. That's why he said what he said. Matter of fact, his, I'm going to read verse 18 to you. He says, Samuel told him every wit and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is Yahuwah. Let him do what seemed good. 
If it seemed good for Yahuwah to kill me and my sons, let him do it. That's the mind Eli had. Me and my sons wrong. If, Yahu if it seemed good to Yahuwah, me and my sons die and the Ark of the Covenant get taken, let it be done. Huh? Now, how many of y'all would be able to have to stand the stand with all to hear the judgment of Yahuwah and you got a mind to say that? Most of y'all ain't going to say it. First thing you're going to say out your mouth, y'all ain't told you that. He ain't told you that. And you ought to go to hell. You know what I'm saying? And you ought to go to hell. And you know why you ought to go to hell? Because you know what you were doing. See, you want the judgment of y'all when it's good, but you don't want the judgment of y'all when you're wrong. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody want to take it when you like this here, man. I done did something wrong, and y'all let me know, hey, boy, you ain't going unpunished. I'm going to come see you about it. And I had, hey, do what seemed right under you. You know what I'm saying? That's true testimony. That's true story. Do what seemed right in your eyesight. Just like Jeremiah say. He say, correct me in that judgment and not in that anger, lest I be brought to nothing. Straight up and down. When, you, when the word is, that's how you're going to think. You're not going to think if a pronouncement is brought on you and you know what you've been doing and this man say, this is what Yah told me to tell you. And you know this man a prophet. And you know the word with him. And you're going to respond. Y'all ain't told you that. I don't believe that. I know you don't. For we not receive good at the hand of Yah and not receive evil? Huh? Like real talk. We not going to we gonna receive good at the hand of Yah but not evil. When it's time to get hooked, get good, your hands open wide. When it's time to receive evil, then y'all ain't said it. That's wicked. That shows forth the household of Shashatan and not a Yahudim. Yahudim ain't going to think like that. This man told Eli he was going to die. And his sons. And the Ark of the Covenant was going to be taken. That man say, let y'all do what seemed good to him. That's right there. That's taking the joy. Not even despising the shame. Verse 3. For consider him that endures such a contradiction of, of sinners against himself, lest you be weird and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. How many of y'all resisted unto blood to not sin? Let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Let's look at somebody that went against sin and shed his blood against in order not to do it. And it was from a lawless people that killed the man. Y'all can write this down for, for iniquity. We're going to get round up to it in a minute. Iniquity is of own. It is apostrophe A, V O N. It's 2 Chronicles 20 and 20 we're going to. Of own. Apostrophe A, V O N. We have the on, which is to know, to understand, to see, and experience. We have the oo, which is a secure nail and hook. And we have the seed. So we get to know and understand the secured seed. See, when you sit back and look at it, that don't sound evil do it. You know what I'm saying? But when we do wrong and we work lawlessness and iniquity, we actually consent that the law is good. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to read that from Paul's mouth. You're actually going to consent that the man law is right and that you ought to be damned. It secures the judgment of Yahuwah and it shows the righteousness in it. 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. No, that's not it. So I'm sorry, 24. 24 and 20. But I'm going to back him up though. By 24 and 15. 2 Chronicles 24 and 15. I always say 20 and 20. I do that every time. I've been doing it for about four years. But Jehoiada the wax old and was full of days when he died. 130 years old was he when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings because he had done good in Yasharal, both towards Elohim and towards his house. Now after the death of Yehuda came the princes of Yehuda and made obeisance to the king, then the king hearkened unto them. And they left the house of Yehuda, Elohim of their fathers, and served groves and idols, and wrath came upon Yehuda and Jerusalem for their trespass. So you see the first thing they did. Soon as the man died, they went and served idols. And as soon as they went and served idols, he killed them. We were talking about forsaking idolatry on Wednesday. Mm 
Mm, I seen that one. Look at verse 19, right? He said, yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again un no, Leah, unto Yahuwah. And they testified against them, but they would not give ear. So do you not realize that this man said he sent men to talk to the people? They wouldn't listen. Hold this against 1 Kings 17 and 10. Hold a second, because you need to sit back and look at this here. This shows who is Kadesh, who is Yahuwah's, and who will he cause to draw near unto him. Because if you hear the word and you don't do it, you don't belong to him. We read this in John. He said, why do you not understand my speech? Even why you can't understand my word? Because ye of, of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, ye will do. So if you find yourself not hearing the word, you find yourself not believing the word, you find yourself walking after the flesh, you find yourself sensual not having the Ruach, that could be a strong inclination that Satan is your daddy and you don't belong to Yahuwah, neither are you Kadesh, neither has he caused you to draw near unto him. Don't do that boy like that. That's not nice. That's not nice, Lizzie. That's about the fourth time I've seen you do that today too. First King 17. My bad. Second King 17. Second King 17 and 9. I'm talking about she straight mushed him and pushed him over earlier. Like he wasn't even there. Matter of fact, make it seven. I want you to hear everything Yahuwah got to say to us. I want you to hear every single solitary word the man got to say. We should be ashamed now. You shouldn't be shaking your head at your forefather like, boy, I can't believe they did that. We ought to be ashamed right now. For it was so, so for so it was that the children of Yasharal sinned against you who were the Alahim, which had brought them up out of the land of Misraim, from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Misraim, and had feared other gods. And walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom Yahuwah cast out from before the children of Yasharal, and of the kings of Yasharal, which they had made. What you think we doing right? Don't you realize, guess what? The statutes of the heathen. The heathen said, I just sat back and said, the heathen say you can be transgender and go in the bathroom or whichever bathroom you want to go in. The heathen say you can like boys. The heathen say you can worship any god you want. The heathen say you can fornicate. The heathen say you can divorce and be remarried. That's what the heathen say. And guess what we do? Walk right in it. Don't you realize when you get dealing with worldliness and you produce worldliness, you a friend of the world, you a friend of the heathen, you doing the things that y'all said not to do, you violating the law. And the children of Yasharal did secretly those things that were not right against you, who were the Alahim. And they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchman to the fence city. So you see how you do it secretly? Because you got that wickedness in your heart. That's why he say the word of Elohim is sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing asunder to the joints of marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You don't realize your work show that this, the things that you were secretly hiding in your heart. Don't want nobody to know what your secret sins and the wickedness you've been doing. How can you believe that seek honor one from another and not the honor that comes from Elohim only? Because you worry about how you're going to look while you sinning in, in, in shadows and in darkness and in private. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all high places that did the heathen whom Yahuwah carried away from before them. Hello? Hello? Yo. And wrought wicked things to provoke Yahuwah to anger. For they serve idols whereof Yahuwah had said unto them, you shall not do this thing. Listen to what the man tell you. Yet Yahuwah testified against Yasharal and against Yehuda and by all the prophets and by all the seers saying, turn ye from your evil ways. Keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the Torah, which I commanded your fathers, which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks to the necks of their fathers that did not believe in Yahuwah the Elohim. When the word come and you don't turn it, you don't do it, you don't believe. 
which means you're not Yahuwah's, which means you're not Kadesh, which means he has not caused you to draw near unto him, which means you are not a part of the family to the highest in his household. Bottom line, he say Baruch is the man whom thou choose. That means he did not decide for you to hear it. And as I told you, no man can make that determination. I cannot give you a mind and an ear and a heart to hear the word. I can't give it to you. Faith come by hearing and hearing come by the word of Elohim. Only Yahuwah can give a mind of faith. Only Yahuwah can open a man's ear to receive the word. When you hear the word, what you going to do with it? Many are called, few are chosen. If people hear the word, they still going to hell. Them that's chosen, they getting in. Bottom line, law stated. You don't like it, take it up with Yahuwah. Write a, write, a, write a letter to him. Don't bring it to me. Because I can't do nothing with it. That's a personal problem. That's what problem you got with Yah. I'm going to read number 16 and 4 one more time. I'm going to read it one more time so it resonates in your brain. That man said in number 16 and 5, Yah will show who are is, who is Kadesh, even him who calls him to come near unto him, even him who he have chosen, will call he calls to come near unto him. I ain't got nothing to do with whom y'all choose. You ain't got nothing to do with whom y'all choose. All you got to do is look at the fruits of the actions and you're going to know who is y'all, who set apart, and who he called to come near unto him. And if you see that and you stay stuck to him, you are of the serpent sea bottom line. And that means you'll never meet an agreement with the woman seed. Period. That's the book. That's the law. The man ain't going against his law. So when you sit back and look at it, this man is, that's how this man determines who going to follow the mystery of iniquity and who going to follow the mystery of Mashiach. That's why he say, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. They don't follow no stranger. That's why you'll know the difference when Mashiach voice is ministered into your heart versus the serpent. You're going to know when y'all talking to you versus the devil and you ain't going to follow it. See, we've been listening to so many different voices, you can't even hear your Malik's voice, your king voice. You don't know what he sound like because you've been listening to your own voice. Man, this thing dead serious, man, because I'm sitting here telling you, when the man of sin come and you ain't been listening to his prophets, you ain't been listening to his word, you're going to listen to that false prophet and you're going to hell. See, we ain't even talking about, oh, you're going to hell for fornicating. We're talking about if you're walking in unrighteousness, the man is going to cause you to believe a lie. He gonna cause you to believe that. Do you not realize this is round the corner? Do you not realize we are the last generation of the children of Yasharal to be in captivity? Ain't no more 25, a generation is about 20 to 25 years. Ain't no 20, 25 years left going on in this crap, man. You ain't seeing your children go to college and get married. You ain't seeing that. Straight up. If you wish this world go on that long, you ought to go to hell for love and iniquity and wickedness. Ain't no way in the world you of Yahuwah and this place don't vex your heart. Ain't no way in the world you of Yahuwah and the world don't vex your heart. You sit back and love sin, you's a bastard. You love this world, you's a bastard. Anybody who of Yahuwah is ready for a kingdom of new Shamahim and new Arash to come where righteousness dwell. We yearn for it, we look for it, we hope for it, we desire for it. Because righteousness is going to be in. Ain't no righteousness in this garbage. And you love it and want to dwell in it. Hoping it lasts as long as it can last so you can work all the last bit of sensual wickedness in your heart. And you think you are Yahuwah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Where's our minds and hearts at? Our minds and hearts are in the rest. That's why I name it in Shamahim. Listen to verse 16 though. And they left all the combination of Yahuwah, commandments of Yahuwah the Elohim and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worship all the hosts of Shamahim, and serve Baal. And they caused their sons and daughters to pass through the fire, and use divination and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of Yahuwah to provoke him to anger. Come on back to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. How many times we done read in this word, we read it in Matthew 22. That this man bring this word and they didn't hear it. That means they wasn't chosen. That's why they got the wrong wedding garments on. And that's why they get bound hand and foot and there's a weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because when you heard the word, you didn't believe it. Nigga, I ain't stuck that there what you talking about. Man, I got to go get these hoes. Man, I got to get this money, man. I'm finna go get high, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna go do this here. Nigga, we got time, nigga. Man, that man ain't coming around here no time soon. Hell waiting on me. Pressure cooking, nigga. Don't get no realer than that, B. Don't get no realer than that, man. 20 and 19, one more time, though. 
Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again under Yahuwah, and they testified against them, but they would not hear. See, that's the whole key thing. If they're testifying against you, he say, cry aloud, lift up your voice like a trumpet, show my people their sins in the house of J Jacob, their transgressions. How else you gonna be saved to be reconciled to Allahim unless your sin? But you don't want to hear about your sin. I love y'all though. I know it's wrong to sin. I cry about it. I feel down about it. You don't feel too down because you keep doing it. So that's not you can't be a y'all with a mind like that. That's a book. That's not personal opinion. That's book. That means a man testifying against you to bring you back to him. But you're resisting because you love sin and iniquity. We can't think like that, man. That's dangerous way of thinking. That's borderline reprobate. We know the end of the line of reprobate is following the man of sin straight into the lake. The mystery of lawlessness has been working. It's been hidden. Now it's been shown. You can be able to see and know the difference. When Mashiach came, the mystery of lawlessness was exposed. The mystery of Mashiach was exposed. Now we know who belonged to who. It's not a mystery anymore. It's not hidden. We know who are yours now. And we know who are, who are Hashatans. We know what house you dwell in. Who you live with. Where your mind at. To whom you yield your member service to obey is to whom you obey. Whether it be sin unto death, obedience unto righteousness. Who are you lending your members to? How are you unequally yoked with unbelievers? I don't care what capacity it is. I'll ride alone before I hang with sinners. I've been doing it almost these whole seven years. I will stay alone before I ride with a sinner. I ain't doing it. I ain't marrying no sinner. I ain't hanging with no sinner. I ain't cool with no sinners. Ain't no beef. I don't look down on them. I don't think I'm better than them. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not fooling with you though. Because I refuse to let you destroy me. Because I know, I just was talking to little Stanley about this earlier now, and he could tell you, y'all, like I said, I'm strong, but I ain't that strong. Solomon, I told you this here, Solomon was wiser than any one of us. I'm strong, I ain't that strong. I ain't that strong. I ain't that strong. The books say I'm blessed if I don't go on the way of sinners. So if I go on the way of sinners, then I'm damned. Why would I be damned? Because the way of sinners is going to consume me and destroy me because they are the serpent seed. That's why he said you're blessed if you don't go. But if we know we know the book, we'll know that. And that's why we wouldn't do it. I can't do it. I can't lose my soul for nothing or no one, not even myself. I can't lose it. I've been doing it too long to lose it. I got respect unto the reward. Say Moses said he chose rather to suffer affliction with the children of Elohim than to have the pleasure of sin for a season. Because he had respect unto the reward. Niggas would rather enjoy the pleasure of sin for six months or a year than rather to suffer and deny themselves. I'd rather suffer and deny myself than to enjoy the pleasure of transgression and sin for a season that you have an eternal damnation attached to it. Ain't no way in the world. Not if you believe this. If you believe this, you're not going to do it. If you don't believe it, you're going to find a way to get your will in there and make your way his way so you can go no way. Verse 20, verse 20. And the Ruach of Elohim came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehovah, the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith Elohim, why transgress ye the commandments of Yahuwah that ye cannot prosper? What? You transgress his commandments, you can't prosper. Don't the, didn't Joshua tell you take good heed of these commandments, you're prospering all your ways? Didn't he tell you that? In the chapter 1, verse 8, didn't he say that? He said you'll have good success. Say this book of the law should depart out of your mouth. You should think upon it day and night that you might observe to do everything that's written in it. Then will your way be prosperous and you'll have good success. But guess what? If you think gain is godliness, you got a perverse and a corrupt mind. And the book say to withdraw yourself from people like that. So don't think that the prospering means that you're doing well in life and natural and carnal things. Because just like I said, and that's second, that's first Timothy chapter six, verse four, if you think I'm just talking. Yeah, so you can go read it for yourself. That's first Timothy six and four. 
He say they are perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds who think gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. So if you think that you prospering financially or you prospering in the world and that mean Allah ain't with you, the book say you got a perverse and a corrupt mind. Which shows forth, you're not Kadesh, you're not Yahuwah's, and he has not caused you to draw near unto him. Showing the separation between the mystery of iniquity and the mystery of Mashiach. That's just bottom line. What we're trying to sit back there is identify something. What we're doing is sitting back is identifying who belongs to who. Who belongs to who? Because that's what y'all failing to realize. If there's enmity between the woman seed and the servant seed, that means it's two sets of churn. If there's wheat and the tares, that means it's two sets of crop coming up out the ground. If there's the sons of Elohim and the sons of the devil, that means it's two sets of churn. That means somebody belongs to somebody and everybody don't belong to Yahuwah. And that's just a reality that's got to be accepted and a pill that must be swallowed. He said, you shall know them by their fruits, their lifestyle, their faith. That's going to show who belonged to who. That's going to show. Because he said he sat back and he spoke that word to them people they didn't hear. He don't say how long he came to them. So that means he came to them repeatedly. And if you didn't hear, if it didn't click the first time, it ain't never going to click to be dead real with it. It ain't never going to click. It ain't never going to click. It ain't never going to click. It's not that many people in this book who he came to over and over again that didn't believe him, that believed in the end. It ain't that many. About the only one come to mind is Paul. And you don't even read him about him coming to Paul. That man came to Paul one time. That's all it took. So I can't even say Paul. He only came to Paul one time. Paul believed off the first time. Didn't take the master to come to Paul four or five times. Paul believed off the rip. Off the rip. The master came to Peter off the rip. Zacchaeus off the rip. Joseph of Arrhythmia off the rip. Martha, Mary, Judas, I mean not Judas, but Lazarus off the rip. There were many people he came to who didn't believe in him. Some did later after the works were manifested. So I'm not saying it's impossible, but boy, ain't no way in the world you're going to sit back and be like, boy, I don't know, boy. I don't know if I believe this or not. And the word done came to you. He done came to you for a year straight, two years straight. It ain't clicked yet. What more do you need to hear? What more do you need to see? Now people walked in the wilderness 40 years and didn't believe. How long do you think it's going to take? Listen to what he did in verse 21. And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court in the house of Yahuwah. That's why you say you got to be faithful unto death. That man was willing to go against sin to the, to the dying of his body. He was willing to die for that. Let's look at somebody else that was willing to go to jail to stand on the word. Genesis 39. Everybody ain't willing to die to stand on the word. Everybody ain't willing to go to jail to stand on the word. Everybody ain't willing to do that. Everybody ain't willing to do that. All right, I appreciate that, Kira. Everybody ain't willing to do that. Everybody is not willing to do that. Everybody is not. Genesis 39 and 20. Everybody ain't willing to do that. Y'all children gonna ride. Y'all children are gonna ride. Y'all's children are going to ride. You know what I'm saying? To the bus out. Because you know why? Because they trust in the reward. They know that Yahuwah is faithful. They know that he's faithful. They know that he will do everything that he's promised. They don't doubt it in the least bit. You got to be on, you got to be, that, that a harder, a evil, that like the book describes a harder unbelief is evil. See, we, we sit back and look at, well, I ain't sinning and I ain't doing this. But if you don't believe, your heart is just as evil as somebody who is sinning. Because you sin and because you don't believe. Romans 14, 23 tell you that anything that is not of faith is sin. That's a sin in itself. If you don't believe, you walk in a perpetual state of transgression. 
Hold on, we gotta back it up a little bit. 39 and 10. Then we'll deal with that issue real fast. And it came to pass as he spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not as she spake, my apologies, to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into to the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she called him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them saying, he hath brought, he hath brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in to, unto me to lie with me and I cried with a loud voice. Now that woman just sat back and lied on this man and say he tried to rape her because he refused to commit adultery with her. So therefore he ends up going to prison. Look at verse 20. And we got the Hebrew word for prison on deck as well. We're going to look at that in a moment. But we're going to look at it in 2 Kings 16, 2 Chronicles 16, I should say, along with it. It says, And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners was bound, and he was there in the prison. But Jehua was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Now you got to sit back and think about that. He told you to be faithful unto death because you've been thrown into this prison to be tried, to see where your faith is. Will you fall off in your faith because you're incarcerated? Because those who are your whoers may have to suffer this. And the reason why we look at it in this fashion is to show you that this has happened to many righteous men. That if it happened to them, it could happen to you. And if it happens to you, it is actually a blessed thing. Because Joseph did nothing wrong, he was thrown into prison. This man say, fear none of these things. Now you got to understand, son, this is an Egyptian. So this is a sinner. So basically this is representation of the devil throwing a just man into prison that he may be tried. Joseph was in prison for a long time. A long time. Innocent man did nothing wrong. He was faithful. And Yahuwah delivered that and set him at the right hand of Pharaoh. You've got to sit back and realize that. that's why he say, be faithful unto death. I'll give you a crown of life. There was a crown set upon Joseph's head. You don't think that got nothing to do with us? He was faithful. Look at Genesis 41. Forty-one and forty-one. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Mishraim. And Joseph and the Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in a vesture of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. You gotta realize that, man. That's the that's the crowning. Be made a king. Since you were willing to suffer with him, you'll reign with him, you'll be esteemed with him. If you endure. If you endure. This is the see, that's why he say when persecution or tribulation arise because of the word, by and by they are offended. Because they have no root of themselves. The same way your ancestors saw them giants when they were spying the land, they say we can't take it. They seen the tribulation that they might have to suffer or the persecution they didn't trust Yah and they brought an evil report on the land because they had no root in themselves. None. Let's look at something right over here in 1st, 2nd Chronicles 16. Or, or first, yeah, 2nd Chronicles 16. That's what it is. Second Chronicles chapter 16, we'll look at about verse 1. Second Chronicles 16 and about verse 1. In the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa Basha, king of Yasharal, came up against Yehuda and built Ramah to the intent that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Yehuda. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of Yehuah and of the king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus, saying, There is a league between me and thee, as there was between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thy, this, thee silver and gold. Go break thy league with Basha, king of Yasharal, that he may depart from me. And Ben-Hadad hearkened unto king Asa and sent the captains of the armies against the cities of Yasharal, and they smote 
Ajon, Dan, Ab Abel, Mayhem, Mayheim, and all the store cities of Naphtali. And it came to pass when Basha heard it that he left off building of Ramah and let his work cease. Then Asa the king took all Yehuda and they carried away the stones of Ramah and the timber thereof, wherewith Basha was building, and he built therewith Gilba and Mitzvah. And at that time, Hanah the seer came to Asa king of Yehuda and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria and not relied on Yehuda the Elohim, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of their, thine hand. And you see where that coming at? See, in Jeremiah chapter 17, he say, Cursed is the man that trusteth in man, that make flesh his arm or flesh his yard. You know what I'm saying? The Hebrew character yard, symbolizing the hand. Cursed be that man. He say, Baruch is the man that trusteth in Yahuwah whose hope Yahuwah is. See, you know, a lot of times we sit back and we try to rely on ourselves, rely on our own judgment, rely on our own way, rely on our own thinking, and we damned for that because we're not relying on Yahuwah. And 99.9% .9 of the time when we rely on ourselves, that means we're moving too fast. We didn't stop and sit back and wait on Yah because we want what we want, when we want it, how we want it. You can't, you can't do that and be saved. You can't do that and be a son. You got to learn how to wait on y'all. But we get impatient because I want what I want when I want it. That's evil. That's an evil heart of unbelief. Bottom line. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubians a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because thou did, did, did rely on Yahuwah, he delivered them into thy hand. Listen to what the man tell you. For the eyes of Yahuwah run to and fro throughout the whole of rats to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Now turn around, I'm going to show y'all something before we read verse 11. Matter of fact, let me, let me read verse 10. Listen to what happened. The prophet comes and testifies against Asa and tells him what Yahuwah says. And listen to what Asa's do. Then, was, then Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in a prison house. For he was in a rage with him because of this thing, and Asa oppressed some of the people the same time. So when this man bared witness of the word of Yahuwah to him, he got mad with the prophet and threw the prophet in the prison house. The prophet was willing to go to prison because of the word of Yahuwah. But did you see what he did? He didn't do what Eli did. If it seemed good unto Yahuwah, let it be done. He got mad with the seer. Look at 1 Th Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 8. Because see, this is what really, what really Asa was showing. Because see, you really can't take your anger out on Yahuwah. This was the same thing that Cain did to Abel. He was mad at Yah. He couldn't take it out on Yah, so he killed Abel. See, y'all get mad when somebody tell you the truth and bear witness according to the word of your wicked deeds, and you get mad at them. But the book finna tell you who you're really mad at. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 8. Make it 4 and 7. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 7. For Allah, he has not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto Kadesh. He therefore that despise, despise not man, but Allahim, who have also given unto us his Ruach HaKadesh. So that's who you're mad with. You ain't mad with man. You mad with Elohim. Every time you seen them people, when a man of Elohim came and manifested the word, they stoned the man, they killed the man, or they locked the man up. What you think Hashatan going to be throwing you in prison for? Just to throw you in there? See, I ain't got the time to sit back tonight. Maybe y'all will on tomorrow. When, when the master say, you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake, we got to go in there and show you where that come from. Showing you the mystery of iniquity when it come to that. Because see, what we're showing you now on the mystery of iniquity, if you're catching it with the lawlessness is, this is the enmity between the servant seed and the woman seed, ain't it? Because every time the woman seed came and bear witness unto the people of their wickedness and their error, they killed them then. Because of the hatred that they had for the woman seed, because of the hatred that they have for Elohim. John 15 and 22, before we read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 6. This is who you're really mad at. This showing you the difference, but those who are of y'all going to hear the word and humble themselves and repent. Because we could go in there and show you people that when the word of Yahuwah were brought unto them, they weeped and they repented.
Ah, oh, I got something in my head. Hopefully I can work it in. Something just came to my mind. 15 and 22. Now, didn't, Asa, didn't, didn't the seer just come to Asa and show, his, show him his sin? Just like Zechariah did too. Look what he's saying. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hate me hate my father also. When Zechariah came and testified against the people, they wouldn't have had sin until he came and spoke to them. Now they didn't have no cover for their sin. Now they hate the man they want to kill him. You know what I'm saying? If the seer wouldn't have came to, act to Asa and bear witness of his evil works, he wouldn't have had sin. But now he either came and did it. Now he hate the man. Now he hate him and his father. You see the difference? There's a difference. That's the mystery of lawlessness right there. That's the mystery right there. That's a part of the mystery of lawlessness. The Hebrew word for prison is Macbeth. It is spelled M-A-H-P-E-K-E-T-H. You can get you Acts chapter 12 too. We're going to look at Peter being in prison while we talking about this here. Because you got to be faithful unto death, man. You got to be willing to stand and endure. Those who not a y'all, they not finna go to jail. That man say, you can get your Luke 21 right behind this Acts chapter 12. I'm going to just let Yahusha tell you. The first character you need is the meme. The next character you need is the hay. The next character you need is the pay. The next character you need is the cough. And the last character you need is the towel. The first character you need is the meme. The second character you need is the hay. The next character you need is the pay. The next character you need is the cough. And the next character you need is the towel. One more time. The meme. The meme, the hay, the pay, the cough, and the towel, right? So what we get is that is we have blood or overpowering or chaos, a breath that is revealed, a word spoken by mouth to cover or to arm, a sign of covenant to seal. So you know what we get with prison? A blood that overpowers, that reveals breath, a word spoken to cover, to seal. So when we actually look getting thrown in prison, this don't sound like nothing bad, now does it? That don't sound like nothing bad, do it? And we just heard him say to be faithful unto death, right? So when we look at that you in the prison house, that he threw the seer in the prison house, and Joseph got thrown in the prison house, Jeremiah got thrown in the prison house, Samson got thrown in the prison house, all these righteous men ain't them. Peter got thrown in the prison house, Paul got thrown in the prison house. So when we look at getting thrown in the prison house, and actually, we know what? He went and preached to the spirits in prison, right? Which means he went in the grave, right? So the prison is actually symbolic of the grave, right? So then when we sit back and we look at that, we go in the grave and we're born again of Mashiach, then we're raised together with him in his likeness, right? So that means to go into the prison is to overpower, his blood would overpower the chaos or overpower the wicked one who put you there, right? And then you're able to reveal his breath. By his spoken word. So his ruach would be revealed by the word because faith come by hearing and hearing come by the word, right? That's how you get the ruach, right? Believing on him as the scripture has said, which would be able to cover you, right? Which would be able to seal you with his covenant. Going into the prison be able to show forth you of Elohim then, wouldn't it? That's why he say they'll cast you in the prison, be faithful unto death to try you. That makes sense. So actually going to jail would be what? A chastisement or a confirming of the covenant that you are a son of Elohim. Because if all these righteous men who I just mentioned went to jail, what makes you think you might not go? I ain't talking about going to jail for being a nigga, being a criminal. See, I've been to jail for being a criminal. You know what I'm saying? I'm a five-time convicted felon. I'm a habitual felony offender in the state of Florida. You know what I'm saying? If I catch a criminal charge right now, I can go to prison for a maximum of 30 years or 60 years or basically life depending on the charge. You know what I'm saying? Straight up and down. And that, that follows me for life. Like there's not a time period where my habitual felony offender status expires. You know what I'm saying? I'm a habitual felony offender in the state of Florida for life. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling y'all for life. Now I went to prison for doing evil. So you don't think that I would be willing to go to prison for doing good? You think I'm scared of that? I wasn't scared to go to prison while I was on the street selling dope. That ain't put no fear in my heart. Because if I was scared to go to prison, I ain't had no business selling dope, then I did. I didn't want to go to prison. You know what I'm talking about? It's not like, yeah, boy, I sure can't wait to be in a room with 73 men every day. You know what I'm saying? Surely looking forward to that. But they ain't put no fear in my heart, though. You know what I'm saying? 
I ain't know what I'm talking about. You can't you can't be doing stuff that can put you in a position where you can be around gangsters, killers, thieves, con men, and all manner of shite individuals, and you scared because that means you ain't cut for that. You know what I'm saying? That means you need to go do something else. So you sit back and you look at it, if the words scare you and this stuff type of stuff pit fear in your heart, that means you ain't cut for this. You know what I'm saying? You ain't cut. It shouldn't put no fear in your heart. Elohim is not giving us the ruach of fear, but of a sound mind. You understand what I'm telling you? This thing can't put no fear in your heart. You hear me? Don't let it put no fear in your heart. This stuff put fear in your heart, that's a problem. Acts chapter 12, man. Verse 1. Don't let this stuff put no fear in your heart. He said, he said, let your heart not be troubled. He said, if you believe in Elohim, believe also in me. Don't let this stuff trouble your heart. Just like Paul say, we ain't trying to trouble your heart by telling you that stuff that's coming. You know what I'm talking about? Don't sit there back and say you got fear in your mind because what I'm telling you. Because this ain't nothing but what the word telling you. This to get you ready. And now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the body. And he killed James, the brother of Yachanan, with the sword. I forgot about that. John the Baptist went to jail too. He got beheaded. And because he saw it plead to Yahudim, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him into the prison and delivered him to four quantarians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the body under Elohim for him. You see, that's a difference. You know what y'all problem is? Y'all won't pray for each other. I pray for everybody every day, three times a day to be exact. Straight up and down, three times a day, every day, minimum. I'm talking about a minimum of three times a day. A minimum and been doing it. Always been doing it. Y'all only play for each other if somebody asks you to do it. Ain't no, none of y'all, there's some of y'all be like, man, pray for me. I already pray for you. You ain't got to have me to do that. That ain't even got to be asked. You know what I'm saying? All I hope is y'all do what, let his will be accomplished in you, and I pray his will for you be for good. But if you did something wrong, let y'all judgment be upon your head as he see fit. I pray he have mercy on you, he don't vanquish your life, but let his judgment be upon you to get you where you're supposed to be at. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the Malachim of Yahuwah came upon him and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell from off his hands. You know what it sound like? Get up quickly, his chains come off. What that sound like to you? Get up quickly, and chains come off. It was somebody, he wasn't necessarily in the key, he wasn't necessarily had two people. It sounded like somebody, right, that went to prison, had the same type of thing happen to him. Let's look in Judges chapter 15. Ah, uh, yeah, I can get to work this in. I can work this in. Judges chapter 15, verse 11. Then 3,000 men of Yehuda went to the top of the rock of Etam and said to Samson, Know thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that ye will not fall upon me yourselves. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand, but surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And when he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Ruach of Yahuwah came upon him, and the cords that were upon his arm became as flax that was burnt, under, burnt with fire, and his hands were loosed from off, the bands were loosed from off his hands. Now he then took this man and bound him. Because the Philistines want him. And Yah freed him. The same way that he freed Peter, son of Malachim, with him and said he freed him. Look at something right here in Judges 16, though, where they had Samson at. Right here in 21. Look where they had Samson at. 
Let's see what they had Samson at before we come back to Acts chapter 12. Let's see what they had Samson at. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetter brass, and he did grind fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon their God and to rejoice, for they said, Our God have delivered Samson our enemy into our hand. Now I'm gonna show y'all how they relate to something. They say Samson been delivered into their hand. They round here bringing sacrifices. They rejoicing. It's like they, they exchanging gifts for each other too, ain't it? They happy. Ain't it? And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God have delivered into our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country which slew many of us. He said, The destroyer of our country which killed a lot of us. I'm finna show you something to say. And it came to pass when their hearts were married, they said. That they said, call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house stand, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto Yahuwah and said, O Yahuwah, Elohim, remember me and I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O Elohim, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. He said, I want to be avenged for the Philistines for my two eyes. Samson took hold of the two middle pillars. Upon... <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky here crazy talking about Samson? Mama done fell. Shut up, Trick. We can't say what he said. That was funny though. It's still funny now. I can be sober and that's funny. You know what I'm saying? It was funny back in the day because we were hot. But it's funny now and I'm sober. I had a homeboy that could sound just like that dude too. He said, and Samson make, took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was born up. And one with his right hand, the other with his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Now he said that he wanted to be avenged for his two eyes, right? And the people were happy and they rejoiced and they did all this stuff, right? Look at Revelation chapter 11. Hold the Acts chapter 12. Let's look at Revelation chapter 11. All we sit back again when we sit back and we look at the mystery of iniquity, what do we see again? We see the serpent seed taking out Yahuwah's seed. Again, we see the enmity and the hatred between the two, right? This is part of the mystery of iniquity. I know you may have not seen that way because I was talking about who was yours and who you're called to draw near unto him and chosen and all that. But in the midst of that, if you actually were paying attention and linking it together, you'll actually see that each in situation and instance that we're looking at, it was sinners and transgressors going against Yah's people, right? The ones that were sanctified. The mystery of lawlessness, those who are lawless have no love for Elohim nor his people. I know I mentioned Luke chapter 21, probably about verse 22. Just hold it. We'll get to it. Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the Malachim stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of Elohim and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles in the Kadesh city, shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Listen to him. I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Now, you, you, do you know where we see an example of two witnesses? He said the eyes of Yah run to and fro throughout the earth, right? To show himself strong on those who are, who are hard and perfect towards him, right? The eyes bear witness, right? It said he put out Samson's two eyes, right? He said avenge me for my two eyes, right? Or my two witnesses. You know what I'm talking about? You look at, when we go and sit back and you look at the law, you'll see Aaron and Moses are two witnesses. You know what I'm talking about? Because they was the ones that were working signs and wonders to the people, bearing witness to the people about what was about to happen to Egypt. You know what I'm saying? So you go look at, hold this and look at Exodus chapter 4. You need to see it in the law, you know what I'm talking about. We can even see that in Numbers chapter 11 when we look at me, dad, and Edad prophesying outside of the camp. Two witnesses. 
You understand what I'm telling you? I got to line the two witnesses all the way up. So bear with me because I got to make sure you understand it. Dropping a jewel on you. Praise Yahuwah for it. Four and twenty-seven. Exodus four, Shemu four and twenty-seven. Yahuwah said to Aaron, "Go into the wilderness and, and to meet Moses." And he went and met him in the Mount of Elohim and kissed him. Moses told Aaron all the words of Yahuwah, who had sent him, and all the signs which Yahuwah had commanded him. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Yasharal. And Aaron spake all the words which Yahuwah had spoken unto Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed when they heard that Yahuwah had visited the children of Yasharal and that he had looked upon their affliction and they bowed their heads in worship. So we see them bearing witness to something toward the people, right? Now come on back to Revelation 11. You can pull numbers 11 on your own time. I'll give you the verse in a minute. That's Numbers 11 and 27, where Eldad and Medad prophesying in the camp of two witnesses. Verse 4, he said, These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the Elohim of the Arats. For y'all to know where that's at, that's in the book of Zechariah. I'm going to just give you the verse. That's in Zechariah. He said, These are the two olive trees and the candlesticks. That is Zechariah, the fourth chapter, and about the third verse. Well, he said two olive trees bide upon the right side of the bowl and upon the left side of the bowl. And then when you drop down about verse 11 and 12, he sit back and he lets you know that. He says in verse 14, these are the two anointed ones that stand behind the master of the whole rats. So it's a witness to it. You know what I'm saying? When you sit back and you look at it, Mo Moses' name is drawn out the water, right? I mean, if he drawn out the water, he drawn out the ruach, it would mean he'd be anointed, right? Aaron is called name mean light bearer, which means he would have to be anointed for that, right? Because what would be able to do it, be able to cause him to be able to bear light or be a bearer of light? You need oil. You know what I'm talking about? So there you go. Number chapter 11. I mean, Revelation 11 and 5. Listen to what he said. If any man will hurt them, fire proceed out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Didn't we sit back and see he say, as you done to me, I'm going to do to you. These have power to shut Shamahim that it rained not in the days of their prophecy and have powers over the waters to turn them to blood and to smite their rats with all plagues as often as they will. Do you know who had power to bring down fire from Shamahim? You know who had power to do that? Look at 2 Kings chapter 1. Let's look and see who had power to do that. You know who prayed for it not to rain? Get your James chapter 5 and we'll see who had power. I'm not saying who these two people is now. Don't sit back and sit back and I'm saying that it's these two men. I ain't going that far. I ain't saying that. I know I tell you that a lot of brothers believe the two witnesses are Elijah and Enoch. Most of them don't have any book to back that up, but I can show you a similar to the behavior according to what's written, who it point to. I'm sorry, 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 8. And they answered him, he was a hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, it is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent unto him a captain of 50 with his 50. And he went up to him and behold, he sat on the top of a hill and he came and he spake unto him, thou man of Elohim, the king have said, come down. Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, if I be a man of Elohim, let fire come down from Shamahim and consume thee and thy 50. And there came down fire from Shamahim and consumed him and his 50. Uh, again, also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty, and he answered and said unto him, O man of Elohim, thus have the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto him, If I be a man of Elohim, let fire come down from Shamahim and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of Elohim came down from Shamahim and consumed him and his fifty. And he sent a captain of, of fifty. Uh, of the third fifty with his fifty, and the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of Elohim, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire from down from Shamahim and burnt up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. 
Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. You know what the difference was between the, the first two and the third one? The third one humbled itself. And showed himself to be a man of Elohim in that process. Because he came in humility of mind and ruach. But he made fire come down from Shamahim and burnt these people up, didn't he? That ain't what it just said here. That these men had power to, uh, to fire proceed out their mouth to devour their enemies. Then he said he had power to shut up Shamahim that it rained not in the days of their prophecies, right? Look at James chapter 5 now. Now we'll get another reason why you see two people come up on this mountain. Based on what we read, just based off the clues. Again, I ain't saying it to these, these people, but it's bearing witness to what they did. I can say that much. James chapter 5, verse 17, 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you, might, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Elijah was a man Subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the Arats by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the Shamahim gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. So, to bring fire out of his mouth and to cause it not to rain, that sounds like what Elijah did, didn't it? Now, let's come back to Revelation 11. Let me see who can tell who, who this sounds like. It says in verse 6, right? These have power to shut Shamahim that it rained not in the days of their prophecy and have power over the waters to turn into blood and to smite their rats with all plagues as often as they will. Who turned water into blood? Anybody know who turned water into blood? Anybody know who smote some people with some plagues? That sounds like Moses, don't it? Didn't Moses do all of that? Now let's look at Matthew chapter 17 and let's see something. Seventeen and one. We ain't got to read all of it. After six days, Yahusha took, took take Peter, James, and John his brother, and bring them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah talking with him. And it's amazing that these two witnesses are going to get the same power that Elijah and Moses had in them. To do the exact same things that they did. But come on back to Revelation 11. And let's see what continues to happen. Don't even worry about Acts chapter 12 no more. Because we know Peter got out of jail. He went to the people's house. They didn't believe he was out. You know what I'm saying? One of the women said, that's his Malachim. That ain't Peter. But it also shows how that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous can overcome much. You know what I'm saying? Like they prayed without ceasing. I just had a situation about a couple weeks ago where it was put on my heart to pray for somebody. I literally, I can't recall the last time I prayed for three hours straight. You know what I'm saying? Slept for an hour and prayed some more. Then he had me sleep for an hour, then I prayed some more. You know what I'm saying? That just wasn't Sunday. I just said, you know what? I'm going to just sit up all night praying. It put on my heart. Pray for this person and don't stop. You know what I'm saying? That means that he sit back and, he, and I sit back and I look at that type of thought coming to my head. That means it's mercy on high for this person. You know what I'm saying? And either y'all wants to sit back and see, will I have the compassion and mercy and wherewithal to do it? Or is he trying to move to be able to spare this person? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we don't even be knowing the danger that we can find ourselves in. You know what I'm saying? You don't sit back and look at it right. Just not even sit back him talking about praying for somebody. You don't even know the danger that could be going around you day to day while you're going around. You know what I'm saying? You don't know why you're in traffic if the person behind you is drunk. You know what I'm talking about? Not paying attention. You don't know what they behind you doing. You don't know. I don't heard people sit back and say they've been riding and they tire was all messed up. And if it, it, it could have exploded and shot off at any time, they would have died. You don't even sit back and look at that. Y'all the one keeping that back from happening to you. But sometimes we look at that stuff as time and chance. Oh, man, he ain't got nothing to do with that. Then when something negative happened to you, you don't even sit back and look at like when Elijah, when when uh when uh, when that, when that woman had that baby, that Alicia told her she'll have that baby. What do you ask for? And that baby died. The first thing she said is, "Have you called my sin to remembrance?" She automatically like this here. Y'all had to do this for some transgression that I did. That's the first thing came to her head. We don't think like that. You know what I'm saying? 
When, when Obadiah, the prophet, when Elijah told him he needed to go see the king, go get the king, Obadiah said, man, you ain't heard what I done did, man. You called him my sin and remembrance? I had to do something wrong for you for you to put me in this type of position. This is how they thought. This is the mind they had. You know what I'm saying? That if something negative happened, they sitting back and looking at this, that, then, the third. But I mean, when I lost that, lost that uh, money for that insurance, I'm thinking to myself, did I lose that because... When I walk past a dude and I ain't really have much on me and he asked me for some for some money to get some food, well, I know if he want food or not and I ain't get to him, that's why he had me lose it. That's what came to my head. You know what I'm saying? Like straight up. Because I might only had a few dollars in my pocket at a time. I ain't really had a spare, but I should have just went ahead and gave it to him. You know what I'm saying? So since I ain't do that, you'll lose this then. This is what come to my head. Whether that's the case or not, this is how I was thinking. It had to have been something I did or didn't do that caused that to happen. We don't look, you look at stuff like y'all ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Only time y'all got something to do with something when you get something you want. Then y'all got something to do with that then though. Y'all got something to do with something when you get what you want. Sometimes you got to be careful if you get what you want because y'all could be giving you what you want for a snare and a trap too. And a stumbling block. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to be careful with that. Just because y'all let you get it don't mean he gave it to you for your good. Verse 7, though. Verse 6, though. Now, it's 7, though. He's saying, when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascend out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Now, for all the tents of purpose, now, we know Samson didn't die. But he got put in the prison house, right? So we know in the prison house is being symbolic of death, then, isn't it? And who, who was the one that did it? The Philistine. Or we sit back and we look at the beast. And when we turn around and look at the beast, we see those that separate a closed work or, or, or dead works. Because those that are sin, they do dead works. And what were they out there doing? They were out there worshiping idols, right? They were rejoicing. Let's sit back and say what the people did. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Mishraim, where also our master was crucified. Now, you got some people to sit back and say that's America. But all you got to sit back and look at is the most high called Jerusalem, Sodom. The man just told you where them people were prophesying at. He's saying the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon their rat shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them when they dwelt on the earth. That's the same thing that happened with Samson. The people sat back and they sat back and rejoiced and they were happy because this man tormented them while, they, while he was alive. He tormented these people while they were alive. Let's look in uh, We talked about the false prophet working signs and wonders. I'll save that for on tomorrow. Save a little bit of that for tomorrow. Well, let them be busy then. So when we sit in the back and we're looking at something, we're going to look at the ish. And we got the olive, right? which is the, the first or the strength, and then the sheen or the, the shine, which is the to teeth to consume and destroy, and the, and the hate, which is to reveal breath. So when we turn around and look at it, the strength that destroys or to reveal breath. So when it says that, Go to Genesis 3 and 16 or 15. Genesis 3 and 15. Genesis 3 and 15. And it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman or the strength to destroy or consume revealed breath. This is sitting back showing Yahusha or the Ruach. 
Then he said, and they be between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This means he will step on him and destroy him. He will step on him and destroy him. He will step on him and he will destroy him. This is what the woman will do. It will destroy him. That's why I say he'll bruise his head. You know what I'm saying? This is why the children, they can't meet in agreement. It's always going to be some head button. This is Revelation chapter 6. I got so much stuff in my head that pertaining to this topic that I ain't going to never get all of it. That's why we're going to take our time with it. Revelation chapter 6. Still got 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and 6. Going about what happened in Reve Revelation 11 and, and Judges 16. Revelation 6 and about 9. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of Elohim and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, O Yahuwah, Kadesh and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the Arats? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Now, why else would they, these people be killed? Look at 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6 before we look at Revelation 12. Let's see why they would be killed. Make it 1 and 4. One and four. So that you, that we ourselves esteem in you the houses of Elohim for your patience and faith in all your persecution and tribulation ye endure. What is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of Elohim that you be counted worthy of the kingdom of Elohim for which ye also suffer. Seeing is a righteous thing with Elohim to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the master Yahushua shall be revealed from Shamahim with his mighty Malachim. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Elohim and that obey not the gospel of our master Yahushua HaMashiach, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the master and from the esteem of his power. When he shall come to be esteemed in his Kadeshim and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Do you see he said in that day? That means when they preached it to him. You know what I'm saying? That's the same thing sitting there telling you, like, those who Yah called to draw, because he said, no man can come to the Father except I draw him, right? Or the Father that sent me draw him. So he has to choose you to come to the Word. This is just going back to showing who is of you and who's not. And what we've been looking at is those who want to kill the set-apart ones, those who hear the Word and turn their backs from it. Those who serve idols, those who serve their belly, those that want to kill the sons of Elohim, those that resist, they showing they don't belong to y'all do it. They showing they're not chosen. They show that they don't, that he's not causing them to come near unto him. This is showing you how the mystery of iniquity always been worked. It started in Genesis with the separation of light and dark, but it started with Cain and Abel. You know what I'm saying? That's the first instance of it. The children of the flesh have persecuted the children of the Ruach from the beginning. The serpent seed has been against the woman's seed from the beginning. The woman seed is seeking to destroy that which is of the serpent seed. The serpent seed is seeking to destroy that which is of the woman seed. You know what I'm saying? Revelation 12. About, oh boy, that page is gone. 12 and about 14. Twelve and sixteen, because I couldn't see the verse. The page was on. And the earth helped the woman, and the rats opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the serpent cast out of his mouth. And the serpent was wroth with the woman. You see how the serpent see the woman see going to get each other right then, right here. And he went to make war with the remnant of a seed which keep the commandments of Elohim and have the testimony of Yahushua Hamashiach. So again, the seed that separates to destroy. All he want to do is separate and destroy. When you sit back and you look at that word, come the serpent seed separated and they destroy. He destroyed Zechariah. They try to destroy Joseph. They try to destroy Samson. 
How many righteous and upright men were killed from the serpent seed? And we talk about people who would see the Yasharah one, but they were the serpent seed. That's why he say he that commits sin is of the devil. He that's born of Elohim does not commit sin. Therefore, the sons of Elohim and the sons of the devil are manifest. So showing who is Yah's and who is not. It's showing the woman's seed. It's showing the serpent seed. It's showing that there's a separation and sanctification between the two. And that's just the reality of the situation. Luke 21 and 22. We're going to stop it right here. I don't have Luke 21 in this book. I'm going to just take it down. It didn't hurt that bad sitting here as I thought it was. Actually, back it up about Luke 21 and 14. Oh, yeah, 14. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed by both parents and brethren, and kinfolks, and friends. And some of you they shall cause to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish, and your patience possess ye your souls. Hallelujah for Yahushua in the word. We stop right there. Pick it up on tomorrow, y'all willing.